Hi, my name is Tom Dick. I'm a math professor and math advisor for Texas Instruments. And this short video is part of the TI and Focus AP Calculus series. We're going to be taking a look at using the TI-84 on the topics of area, distance, and volume using released exam question AB2 from 2022. Let's start out by taking a look at the two functions whose graphs form the region involved in this question. The first function was labeled f of x, and we'll store that in y1, and that function is the natural log of the quantity x plus 3. The second function, labeled g in the problem, we'll store in y2, and that function is x to the fourth plus 2 times x cubed. Now once we have these functions entered in, let's go ahead and take a look at the graph. And that way we can check it against the picture that was provided in the problem. And that's a practice that I would uh, suggest is especially appropriate on the uh, calculator active questions like this one on the AP exam. And here we can see the region that's enclosed by those two graphs. Uh, the blue graph is the natural log of x plus 3. And the red graph is x to the fourth plus 2x cubed. Now, we're given one of the intersection points, and it's the more obvious one, is right at negative 2. That's a common 0 for both functions. Now, we can see another intersection point that's labeled simply b in the problem, but we're going to want to find the value of that. So let's make use of the calculation facility. We'll pull up the calculation menu, choose intersect, our first curve will be our y1, our second curve will be y2, and then as a guess, what we want to do is move our cursor over near x equal 1, which is approximately where b is. Okay, that looks close enough. Now let's go ahead and hit enter, and it returns a very accurate approximation of the x value of that intersection point. Now we want to store that away, so I've returned to the calculator menu, and we called x. That's where the intersection value uh, for x was located. And let's go ahead and store that in b. So we'll store that answer in b, and once we've done that, we can access b at any time during the problem. Now we're ready to address the questions posed in this problem. The first question was to simply find the area of the region enclosed by the two curves. So we'll need a definite integral here. I'll go to the math menu, go down to number 9, fn int. When I recall that, we'll get a nice little integral template. The first intersection point is at x equal negative 2. We've stored the second intersection value for x in b, so we'll put that as our upper limit. And for our integrand, we'll want the difference between the two functions. The upper function was y1, and we'll subtract y2. So I'll recall those from the y variables menu. And once we have our integrand set up, to finish up the integral, we'll be integrating with respect to x. And then we'll enter, and there's our answer to part A of this question. All right, now let's turn to part B. Now here you'll see I've drawn a vertical line segment that connects the two curves at x equal negative 0.5. What we're asked in this question is whether as we move from left to right, that green line segment that goes bet vertically between the two curves is increasing in length or not. In other words, is the distance between the two curves increasing or not at x equal negative 0.5. So we're going to set up a, a new y variable, uh, y3, as the difference between the two functions, y1 minus y2. And then this is the function that's giving us the vertical distance between the two curves, as long as we're in that region where the blue curve is above the red curve. And to find whether this is increasing or decreasing, we'll want to take a derivative. So I'll take the derivative with respect to x of this y3, which is our y1 minus y2, 
and then we're going to evaluate that derivative at x equal negative 0 0.5. We can see that our value is approximately negative 0 0.6. The sign being negative tells us that distance is definitely decreasing. Now in part c of the problem, we're asked to find a volume of a solid that has as a base the region in question here. Now I've gone ahead and copied the integral down from the previous part A because we're going to adjust this. Uh, this region, each cross section that is perpendicular to the x-axis is a square. So that difference y1 minus y2 is the length of one side of that square. So for the volume of this solid, we'll want to integrate the cross-sectional area function, which would be that distance squared. So you can see I've uh, amended the integral and recalculated, and this is giving us the volume of that solid. Finally, for part B of this problem, we're told that a, the vertical line moving across the region is moving at the rate of 7 units per second. And we're asked how fast is the cross-sectional area changing with respect to time. Now what we're going to do is find the derivative of the cross-sectional area with respect to x and then use the chain rule. Now remember that cross-sectional area is y1 minus y2 quantity squared. So if we take y3 squared, take its derivative with respect to x, we get this value that you see here, negative 1.32455. But remember, x is changing at the rate of 7 units per second. So we want to multiply that result by 7 to get our final answer using the chain rule of negative 9.2718. Well, that concludes our video. For more resources like these, please see education.ti.com.